Hello, and welcome to part one of finding the derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. Now, let's look at the derivative of e to the x. Now, for e to the x, there's an expression here we want to evaluate. And that's the limit of e to the h minus 1 divided by h as h approaches 0. Now, we have some values here. We want to kind of test something here. And I probably shouldn't expose the, the answer here, but basically it's OK. Because we want to find out what is the limit of this function right here. What is the limit? So we put some values here, negative uh, 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001. And of course, we said it was going to be, we were assuming, okay, it's approaching zero here, right? And then we picked 0 0.001, 0 0.01, and 0.1. And so when we plug those values in, this is what we get as an output here. So when we plug these values in and got these, um, these values in, in on the output side, you notice that this thing is getting closer and closer and closer to 1. And this is getting closer and closer and closer to 1 from the left, from the, from the right hand side and the left hand side. From actually from the left hand side, closer and closer to 1, and from the right hand side, closer and closer to 1. So the limit of e to the h minus 1 over h as h approaches 0 is 1. So this is like a little bit of, a, this is a theorem here. So basically, let's do a problem and let's use the difference quotient. Let's talk about the instantaneous rate of change using the five step process. And we say that we want to find the derivative of e to the x. So we want to find f prime of x. So f of x is going to equal to e to the x. And then, of course, we have the second step, f of x plus h. So we plug in e to the, e to the x plus h. And that gives you this expression, e to the x times e to the h. And remember, when the bases are the same in this particular situation, when the bases are the same, right, then we want to add the exponent. So we're kind of reversing the, the, uh, the expression here a little bit here. So this is what we have, e to the x. And we're deriving this here and telling you why e to the x is what we'll tell you that in a second what the answer is. Let's get down to the bottom of this. Let's say f of x plus h minus f of x. And we say e to the x times e to the h minus e to the x. And then we did, we what? We factor this out. You know, we'll pull out the GCF and of course factor this out. We get e to the x times e to the h minus 1. And as we use, come to the fourth step here, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is equal to what? This expression divided by h, you see. So here we have e to the x times e to the h minus 1 divided by h. And as we go over here, okay, f prime of x equals the limit, well, as we say, f of x plus h minus f of x over h as the limit of h approaches 0. And this is going to basically give you this expression right here. And as we go down and matriculate down, as we see, this expression actually means something. As soon as we use the limit property and we sort of uh, place e to the x to the outside of this function here, of this expression. And we have the limit as, as h approaches 0 with this expression, e to the h minus 1 divided by h. We know that that's going to equal to 1. So when we actually substitute 1 in for this expression, this would be what? e to the x times 1, which is what? e to the x. So therefore, the derivative with respect to x, right, 
the derivative of this, fun of this function with respect to x is going to be still e to the x. So this is very good. So this is derived. So pretty much, if you ask the question, what is the derivative of e to the x? You can say e to the x. And I've actually uh, had my students re repeat this over and over again. These are one of the things that you can actually remember. Just like knowing that the derivative of a constant is 0, you know the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of 5, or the derivative of 6, or the derivative of some number, constant number, is 0. Same with e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the sum of the uh, basic derivative principles can easily be remembered. Now, let's look over here for a second, and let's talk about finding the derivative of the natural log of x. You know, and if x is greater than 0, we want to use the five steps of the instantaneous rate of change. So, and of course we're deriving this. And so we see that f of x is equal to the natural log of x, and that f of x f of x plus h is equal to the natural log of x plus h. Remember, this can't really, this cannot be simplified at all. And so the third step being f of x plus h minus f of x is equal to the natural log of x plus h minus the natural log of x. We could use property two, remember? When we say the natural log of a minus the natural log of b, whenever you're subtracting, it's actually division that you're performing here. And so we use the natural law of x plus h divided by x. And so that's understood to be that. So when we come to step four, we need to divide what, we need to take this expression here and divide by what, h, right? So as you look at this, the natural law of x plus h over, over x divided by h over one and as we take the reciprocal, we change the sign of multiplication and take the reciprocal, 1 over h. And then we're going to multiply x over x to change the form. And x over x is equal to 1, but we're going to use x over x to change the form. But we're going to switch this to this side. And so when we do this, we're going to come up with x divided by x times h times the natural log of 1 plus h over x. So as you see what I did right over here, this is x divided by x, which is 1, plus h over x. So we kind of simplified it so we can be able to work with uh, the equation a little bit more better. And so as we see here, this is going to be, we kind of factor this inside, put, we bring this inside here. So this here is going to be 1 over x times x over h times what? The natural log of what? 1 plus h over x. So, as we go up top here, remember this, uh, pretty much this, this property where we take the exponent and we actually uh, bring the exponent down and it became, you know, some sort of valued number or, uh, or some sort of variable, it could be a variable number and we actually solve for, or use some sort of simplifying method, the properties is what it is. We have ln, or the natural log of a to the p power, power p, and then bringing this over, right? And what, that, what takes place there is actually you're working backwards. So we're taking x plus h from here, and we're actually making a what? We we're actually putting it in to as the exponent, just like right here. So that's what we did in, this, in, in of course, the step four. So one over x times the natural log of one plus x over h raised to the x over h, and that's because of the property of logarithms. So go back and review the property of logarithms, and you'll see why that is. And okay, step five, of course, we're going to uh, add the limit there f of x plus h uh, minus f of x divided by h, and which is with the limit as h approaches 0. And so when we do that, basically we do some uh, substituting. We're going to 
let s equals h over x, and as h approaches zero, which will imply that s will approach zero. And so when we do that, we're going to do plugging in s for h over x, and then of course that reciprocal, if it's h over x is s, then if it's x over h, then it's going to be 1 over s, as you see. So in this particular case, since this is equal to that, and since that's the case, then 1 over s is going to equal to what? h over, I mean x over h, x over h. So that's where, why we plug this or substitute this value, this expression there. So we use a limit property. We use the limit property by bringing this out. And also, as s approaches 0, and we use the definition of what? e. So the, what's the definition of e? Remember what we discussed in the previous uh, video, that 1 plus s raised to the 1 over s, that's going to equal to what? That's going to equal to e. So this expression here is going to equal to e. So the natural log of e is going to equal to what? 1, remember that? Times 1 over x. So 1 over x times 1 is going to give you 1 over x. So the derivative of the, the natural log of x with respect to x is going to be 1 over x. One of those properties of derivatives that you must, of course, you can actually memorize or know, such as e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the derivative of the natural log of x is always what? 1 over x. Moving right along, let's look at some other derivations here. Let's look at other logarithm and exponential functions. Now we see we have a, a logarithmic function here, well, y is equal to log base b of x, and we want to change that to an exponential form. So it'll be b to the y is equal to x, and so we want to take the natural log of this to both sides. And remember we recall the property of b to the y is equal to y times the natural log of b brought down to, from the exponential uh, or the exponent position down to the, as a base. So and we have y times the natural log of b is equal to the natural log of x. So now we're going to solve for y. And when we solve for y, of course, this is what we get here in our expression. So y is equal to 1 over the natural log of b times the natural log of x. And so we're going to plug in y equals, we're going to plug this in to the expression, and we get the log base b of x is equal to 1 over the natural log of b times the natural log of x. So remember to change your base formula from, for logarithms. Remember that from pre-calculus? So that's basically we're getting into the change of base for that. But this expression is very important because it's something that's going to be very useful when we actually uh, differentiate this expression to both sides. So similarly now, we can find the relationship between b to the x and also e to the x for any base b such that b is greater than 0, and b, but b can't equal to 1. So why is it b to the x? We want to take the logarithm, the natural log in this case, to both sides, and we recall this expression, remember the expression? And so now we're going to take the exponential function of both sides, and when we do that, we're going to say the natural log here and the natural log there. We're going to take the natural log of both sides, and then we're going to bring over the x. And of course, this is our expression here. So therefore, when we plug in, when we plug in y, we're going to plug in b, b to the x power, right, into y right here. So this becomes b to the x is equal to this expression, e to the x times the natural log of b. Again, the change of base formula for exponential functions. And now when we actually do this, we want to differentiate. We want to differentiate. Differentiate means take the derivative of both sides of this function. So we want to take the derivative of this function here, 
to both sides. So we want to take the derivative of this to both sides. And we're going to come up with the natural log. Actually, it's going to end up being 1 over the natural log of b times 1 over x. So when we actually do this, when you actually find this expression, this is actually what this is. When you actually find the derivative of this, it's going to be the 1 over the natural log of b times 1 over x. So as you see this, this is very, very important because what they're doing when you take the derivative of this, you're actually pulling this over and then taking the derivative of just the natural log of x, and then this times that will be, give you that particular solution. Same with uh, the, uh, the differentiating b to the x right here. b to the x is equal to e to the x times the natural log of b. So the natural log of b is going to equal to, when we take the derivative, it's going to equal to what? b to the x times the natural log of b. So here we have our basic exponential and logarithmic functions, their derivatives. Uh, which the derivative of e to the x is going to be e to the x, and the derivative of the natural log of x is going to be 1 over x, and the derivative of b to the x is going to equal to what? Some number b to the x times the natural log of some number b. And then, of course, the natural of uh, the uh, derivative, sorry, the derivative of the log base b of x is going to be what? 1 over the natural log of b times 1 over x. And we're going to do some problems in the, in the uh, part two of this video, so stay tuned. Don't go too far, um, and uh, we'll see you in a few minutes.